Welcome to the Goal Zero Toolbox Talk series. Today's Toolbox Talk. Silicosis. Silicosis is caused by inhaling dust that contains free crystalline silica. The development of silicosis is influenced by several factors, which include Amount and kind of dust inhaled. Amount of free crystalline silica in the dust. Form of the silica, examples, crystalline, or amorphous. Size of the inhaled particles. Length of exposure. Individual resistance. Smoking habits. Age of worker. There is no effective treatment for silicosis. As such, the only way to protect workers from developing silicosis is to control their exposure to silica containing dust. Workplace exposure to crystalline silica can be controlled in several ways. Workplaces conduct a risk assessment and eliminate or reduce hazards according to the hierarchy of control. Here are some examples. Eliminating or substituting hazardous products that contain silica with safer alternatives. Engineering controls are selected to control emissions at their source. These options may include any or all of the following. Process selection. Workplace design. Equipment selection. Modification of existing equipment or processes. Ventilation. Work practices and procedures include. Safe handling, use, and disposal of materials containing silica. Housekeeping, such as wet sweeping, high-efficiency particulate air, HEPA. Filtered vacuuming or other methods that minimize the possibility of exposure. Maintenance. Personal hygiene facilities and practices. Provide clean washing facilities and eating facilities. Keeping clothing clean is important as dust can remain on clothing. Exposure can occur when clothes are handled, put on, or taken off causing the dust to become airborne. Education and training. Provide workers with information and instruction on the hazards posed by free crystalline silica, what measures have been implemented to reduce or control exposures to acceptable levels, and the need for worker cooperation in complying with controls. Personal protective equipment, PPE, may include eye and face protection, skin protection, and respiratory protection, which is dependent on air monitoring results. A workplace medical surveillance program will not prevent silicosis but may detect early signs of silicosis in workers. Medical surveillance may be required in some jurisdictions. Early detection can inform the workplace of the need to improve silica control systems to prevent further exposure to workers. Workers with early signs will be able to obtain treatment and may need to be accommodated in the workplace.